Now then, and we're in the workshop again, but this time this is a sort of catch-up video and I've done myself a list. There's all sorts of stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, right, first of all, I've noticed that quite a few channels, there's some machinery channels from up north, where they're very reluctant to um, reference any other channels. And it's a sort of corporate attitude of, I've got my viewers, I want to keep them, I'm earning money out of this, I'm not going to let anybody know about any other channels that I find interesting. And it's a bit sad really. It really is. And even if they uh, reference or they use the information out of your one of your videos, they still don't reference the video. Very corporate, very modern viewpoint. Yeah, Not really um, what YouTube's all about, one would assume. However, I was looking at, let me just look at my notes, David McLucky, that's an IE on the end, and he's got a very good video about uh, YouTube and making money and the uh, motivations behind it and channel content. So have a look at that, you'll find it quite amusing I'm sure. Yeah. I also want to reference uh, Ian Helsby, of course he's one of my Patreon um, subscribers, whatever you call it. Yeah. Uh, hi Ian. Um, right, so we've got reference to other channels. Now then, Ave. His last video, or the one before that, or the one before that, was talking about um, making tools and he had a titanium screwdriver there with wooden handles. So let's just um, zoom in on this antique one. So I remembered that I had this screwdriver in my screwdriver tool roll and I've wire brushed it up a bit and there's no maker's name on it apart from there's a G stamp there but as you can see it's really quite nicely designed it has an artistic view to it put it like that and just the same as the one on Ave's channel you've got a tang or a flat tang that runs through with a wooden handle either side that's riveted on and a solid end there but as he commented you don't want to go belting that very much because you'll end up squashing this bit and popping the wooden handle off and destroying the artisan view of it really I'm just gonna zoom in on a couple of bits and just let you view this you see how nicely that is the interface between the stem and the blade and that blade is oval tapering and there you go. Anyway, it's just a thought. It's a lovely screwdriver. The shank, however, is not that tough. So it is a screwdriver, it's not a lever. Okay, so that's that bit sorted out. Yeah, now then, Alistair commented, What are you doing wearing a, an Australian cricket cap whilst we've got the ashes going on? Or that sort of thing. Anyway, there's a good story behind this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on the cricket cap itself. Yeah, and then I'll tell you the story. Thank you. 
So I bought this on eBay. I've been looking for a cricket cap for ages just because I like them. Yeah? For no obvious reason. I don't go and watch cricket. And this came up and I put a bid on it and instantly somebody outbid me. I thought, oh, this is dodgy. Just typical. And then a bit later on, I just thought, I don't know, I'll have another go. So I put another bid on it. And then about a day later, the, uh, the auction was ended on the highest bidder, which was me. I thought, that's fine. And it was like two pounds plus one pound fifty postage. I thought, fair enough. Then I got an email from the, the guy going, I was just messing around on the computer and I accidentally uh, pressed the sell to the highest bidder. Um, I can send it to you, but if I do, I'll give you really bad feedback. I said feedback there. And I thought, oh, here we go. He's obviously trying it on, didn't know about eBay, but thought go to the highest bidder means it goes to the highest bid that's been put on, not the highest bid that actually shows, because there's a difference. I just thought, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, then he relisted it, and no one else bid. So it went for a pound. So Mr. Clever lost out. He was obviously in the pub showing off in front of his mates or something like that. Anyway, it turned up. Fine. And then you go, NTDCC. What on earth is that? So I put that in the... Uh, uh, into Google or into a search, web search. And it came up with the um, North Texas Diecast Collectors Club. I thought, mm, that's not right. Yeah, that can't be right. But I couldn't find anything else. So I left it for ages. I'm just going to flip this cap over and tell, show you what it's inside. So there you go. So another year or two down the track. And I thought, I'm going to find out about this. I thought, NT, Northern Territory. So I had a scoot around on the net and came up with, I don't remember what website it is now. Maybe it was Darwin. Uh, Darwin Cricket Club or something like that. And I emailed through and I got a truly wonderful little message back from a guy called Simon Dring. And he went, no, it's not ours, but I'll I'll put the word out. And then about a week later, the uh, he emailed me back. I mean, it's great that people will just show a bit of an interest in this sort of thing, without like everything's got to make you a profit. And he came out and he said, uh, "Where is it now? I've got it down on my list here. It's Tasmania." It's Newtown Cricket Club, Tasmania. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so that's the story of that. So Alistair was going, you having a go at us? Yeah. Uh, no, it's not an Australian cricket clap, cap, although it says so inside. It's Tasmanian. So that's that story out of the way. So what else have we got on the list? Ah, yes. Hang on a minute, I've just got to go and get something. Right, got it. Now then, I was up at Theddlethorpe about a week ago. And there's a lot of dunes there, and it's part of a nature reserve. Uh, you know, they're grassed over, the big rolling dunes. Some of them are quite high. And sticking out of the edge of a dune was that. I think we need to zoom in. Some people might recognise it. It's a very early milk bottle. 
I can't see what's going on. Let me just change the, the monitor. That's better. And uh, I'm guessing 1920s, 1930s, something like that. It's quite abraded on the outside because it's been in the sand. So this could have been in those dunes for 80 years, something like that. Depends actually how old it is. And these ones, there's a little groove around the inside of there. And they had a wet waxed cardboard lid that just to just to pop in. Yeah. Delivered by the milkman. When you had local dairies and they used to deliver and it was a their bottles became sort of standardised to them. And this says Gilbert Brothers Limited. So oh, that's quite interesting. Um, and it says on the bottom UGB. I can't read the rest. 928. But there you go. So. That's a milk bottle. And if you go wandering around the woods like I do, especially woods that are about a, a lane or something like that, in amongst the hedges you often find milk bottles. You can imagine some old geezer, some farm worker, yeah, this is his breakfast or something like that, and he's either walking to work or he's in an old truck or something and he drinks it and then hurls it out the window in the nearest hedge and then 60 or 70 years later you go wandering along and especially in this time of year about February everything is cold and dry which makes a change this year and uh, all the vegetation sat down because it's been raining in for in December and January and everything's pushed down and these bottles just show slightly so this is a later one than this one it's still got quite a thick neck and it's quite heavy but it's got the older the the more modern seal which was tin foil that was bent over and wrapped into there now those people in Britain yeah I'm telling them how to suck eggs but this is just generally interest for all over the world. Then later on, you get another one. Smaller neck. Yeah, and this one says Over Dairies Limited. Or is it Clover? It's Clover. Clover Dairies Limited. Okay, and it's called Sunfed. There you go, so that is a, a later one, I don't know, maybe the 50s, something like that. And those people who are of my age will recognise this. It's one third of a pint, and this says United Dairies. This is what you used to get at school. You used to get one third of a pint of milk every day at school. And as long as the crate hadn't been sat next to a radiator, it was all right. But sometimes, you know, the dairyman would drop them off at five in the morning and be left outside in the freezing weather for like three hours and they'd be partially frozen. So that was that one. And then, this is the modern one. Yeah. These are the ones that we get nowadays. And this says, Coates Wold Dairy. Yeah. And for modern people who don't know stuff, it says, keep refrigerated. Then it says, please rinse and return. Now I'm going to zoom in on, on this one because it's quite interesting. Because it's the, the glass isn't stained, you can see just there and down the bottom there, where it's been rattling in the crate. So this has been recycled quite a lot of times. Now for, 
you know, it's obvious in this country that we have milkmen and they deliver milk either every day or every other day. Over here in the sticks, um, it's every other day. And, you know, it's local communication, it's a local trade, etc, etc. And you're not buying milk in plastic. And it's not from one of the big corporate um, supermarkets. Uh, so it's a thing to be encouraged, I think. And, you know, these are recycled. And it's not as if there's a lot of extra transport involved because when the milkman comes again he picks up the empties goes back to the dairy yeah, and the lorry that delivers the milk to the local dairy or might be even a distribution point nowadays yeah, he delivers the milk takes the empties back so there's no doubling up on diesel and transport etc etc and here we can see the top and it just crimps in. So these are for, this is basically just just showing stuff for um, my much appreciated subscribers from outside the UK. There's just a bit of tin foil and it's moulded down and then when you want to open it you just press that and it lifts off. Just like that. So I think yeah, using the milkman, keeping your trade, however sort of you can argue it, it's not as corporate as a big supermarket. So the trade is more local than a big supermarket. So I'll just zoom in on that and show you those wear points. You can just see there where it's been rattling in the crate and there's another one down the bottom there and that's the tin foil top and I remember when I was young there was a big thing about aluminium and clubs and that sort of thing used to get everybody to save the aluminium from the milk bottle tops Wash them thoroughly or they would stink after three months. But um, yeah, they save the aluminium uh, and after a year weigh it in. So that's that one. So what else have we got? Ah, oh, yes. Ah, this is where the rant starts. Okay, this week I've been helping a member of the family uh, do some maintenance on their Vauxhall Vectra 1.9 diesel ah, it was all right but you know, if you're going to design a car round an engine that you buy in right for crying out loud don't put the oil filter at the back of the engine on the transverse engine behind the exhaust and behind two pieces of the bodywork where you can't get your arm into it right it's one of these modern ones which harks back to the old Morris Oxford and Morris Minor days where uh, it's a paper element and you take the the casing apart it's not a spin-on one if it's a spin-on one it might have actually been easier but I can understand why it's just a paper element and on those Vectras Basically, you need to put the front end on a set of ramps, crawl underneath and um, fiddle your way in there to try and undo this the cap of this um, oil filter cover. And you use a 32mm socket on it. And you can get, if you're lucky, you can get one click on a socket wrench so what a pain in the neck why couldn't they just cast a piece of alum, an aluminium boss and then have a couple of hoses to uh, a place where an oil filter body was accessible yeah you know just because the filter is sideways so it's not facing down it's sideways right and uh, let me do and the exhaust is there. 
uh, about two and a half inches away from it. And then there are two pieces of bodywork there. Yeah, so it's like, I, I'm not saying anymore, but it's pathetic. It's absolutely mindlessly pathetic. Down to a price, not up to a standard. Uh, I won't go any further than that. But it does hark back to this meanness. Does hark back to the um, my earlier motoring days when I put a 1300 Morris Marina uh, engine in a Morris Minor truck, and uh, in those days, it, the bean counters had been there. And what they'd done with the Morris Marina engine and some of the other engines is instead of putting six little drain holes in the piston at the back of the oil scraper ring groove, they didn't. And it was like, this has saved us three pence. Three pence times a million pistons is worth having. But what it meant was after 30,000 miles, the Morris Marina engine, 1300, I think it was an A-series block, um, they all started burning oil. So the standard thing for people who've got very little cash and is building engines up and making do and mending is you get a little drill out and drill six holes through the back of the oil scraper ring groove. And that allows the oil scraper to scrape the oil off the bore and instead of it building up in that ring and it's got nowhere to go, it can drain back through the piston back into the sump. So again, you know, it's this whole down to a price, not up to a standard. It's just uh, 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 rant over and done with. Yeah. Um, hopefully we've picked up on a few things. Um, I've got various videos sort of backing up. I mean, they're in my head at the moment. But one of them is about chain creep and how to get rid of it. I mean, there's the obvious bits about tick over and this, that, and chain tension. But there are some more things that will cause chain creep. And I want to do some more on that uh, Rect Proven 2.5. I want to see how the, the brake is fitted to the shaft. Because that wind shaft is solid all the way through. It's not a tube, it's solid, so it's a weighty old thing. Um, and then I want to get on with the Denby drill, because I've got more ideas about uh, that sort of thing and the drive. So, catch up with you later. Cheers now.